Is Vino Venus, or VV ECMO, kind of like adding a second set of lungs? My name is Ken Hoffman. I'm an intensivist at the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne. This is the second video in our Introduction to ECMO series, aimed at new staff joining our team. It will cover the principles of VV ECMO, the indications, complications, and method of weaning from VV ECMO support. To start with, Let's talk about the VV ECMO circuit. A pretty accurate model for thinking about the physiology of VV ECMO is to consider the membrane oxygenator as a second set of lungs set up in series. The ECMO circuit starts with an access cannula which sits in the right atrium or vena cava and removes blood from the venous circulation. This blood is then pumped to the membrane oxygenator for gas exchange, before being returned back to the right atrium via the venous circulation. As the blood is removed from the venous circulation and returned back to a similar location in the venous circulation, we're still dependent on the native heart to pump it to the native lungs and then around the body. For this reason, VV ECMO only provides respiratory support. So if the patient's heart isn't working properly, VV ECMO won't help with this. What VV ECMO is really for is providing gas exchange when the native lungs are not able to adequately oxygenate blood and remove CO2. Oxygenation occurs very efficiently in the membrane oxygenator, so blood leaving the oxygenator is completely saturated with oxygen. Therefore, if a patient requires more oxygenation to achieve adequate saturation targets, turning up the fresh gas flow won't help. Instead, we need to increase the total blood flow through the ECMO circuit. Removal of CO2, on the other hand, can be controlled by changing the fresh gas flow. Think of turning up the fresh gas flow like turning up the minute ventilation on the ventilator. In terms of the indications for VV ECMO, it is used in the setting of severe respiratory failure when the patient cannot be safely ventilated using intubation and lung protective ventilation techniques and proning if appropriate. It is almost exclusively used for acute but reversible conditions. Although, very occasionally, it may be used as a bridge to transplantation for some specific chronic respiratory conditions. In terms of the complications of VV ECMO, the common things to look out for are bleeding, thrombosis, infection, and hemolysis. In addition, as VV ECMO is used when it's difficult to safely ventilate someone, we need to watch out for barotrauma complications, such as pneumothorax. For this reason, when someone is on VV ECMO, we usually set the ventilator to ultra lung protective ventilator settings. This translates to, if the VV ECMO is working, don't worry too much about ventilating them until the lungs are actually getting better. There are two specific complications worth mentioning in VV ECMO. They are access insufficiency and recirculation. Access insufficiency occurs when the negative pressure in the access cannula results in it being sucked up against the vessel wall. This results in variable flow rates in the ECMO circuit, which may drop to zero, and it causes movement in the ECMO circuit, which is often described as chattering. To manage this falling flow rate, paradoxically, you should turn down the ECMO blood flow rate to reduce the negative pressure in the access cannula. An alternative is to give some fluid to try and expand the venous blood volume. However, in severe respiratory failure, this is often just a short-term solution that might actually make the lungs worse. If access insufficiency is a major problem in managing a patient, we often reconfigure them with two access cannulas, one in the femoral vein, one in the jugular vein, in a configuration that we term high flow. This should increase the total amount of flow through the ECMO circuit without having such high negative pressures at the access cannula tips. The second specific complication worth mentioning is recirculation. 
This occurs when the returned oxygenated blood is sucked back up into the access cannula, effectively having oxygenated blood recirculating through the ECMO circuit, whilst the patient may be pumping deoxygenated blood around their body. This is managed by ensuring there is adequate distance between the access and return cannulas, which can be checked on a chest X-ray. If cannulas require repositioning, it's preferable to withdraw the access cannula rather than inserting the return cannula further due to infection risk. The final thing to talk about is weaning. This is done by progressively reducing the ECMO fresh gas flow as the lung pathology is improving. Once the fresh gas flow has been on zero litres per minute for 24 hours, the lungs should be safely ventilatable and the VV ECMO can be removed. In summary, VV ECMO is used for respiratory support and allows safe gas exchange when the lungs are not safe to ventilate whilst waiting for the underlying pathology to improve. Complications may occur related to the ECMO cannulas or circuit, such as access insufficiency, or the VV specific complication of recirculation. Weaning occurs by progressively reducing the fresh gas flow rate once the patient's pathology is improving and the patient can be safely ventilated. If you would like to read more about our ECMO protocols, they are freely available at ecmo.icu. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel.